Hey guys, Green837 here again. This is part three on my survival kit series. There are going to be upcoming parts. I don't know how many yet. But uh, in the upcoming videos, I'm going to start suggesting what you should have in your survival kit if you are following my direction, you know, my ideas or uh, you know, why I have certain things in there in depth, not just a brief you know, explanation. Oh, uh, I have the whistle in there you know, for signal. I'll explain which whistle, why I chose that particular brand of whistle, for example. So let's get started. Yeah. Survival kit. Um, redone the paracord on here so I can use this carry handle. I may go back and put it back the original way, where I had it wrapped around, uh, around the width, which was a good idea because it kept me from going in there to grab something, you know, oh, like if I was starting a fire at camp. You know, just me and some buddies camping, you know, and I was in charge of starting the fire. Preventing me from going in there and just grabbing one of my little tender quick, starting the fire. Because that's what you don't want to do. You want this to be your emergency purposes only. That's my philosophy, is that this is your emergency kit. The base emergency kit. This is what you want. If you don't have anything else, you want, at very least you want to have your kit. But... It, but that this, sh in an ideal world, this should not be all that you have. Most of the time, uh, at least for the situations that I find myself in, you know, how I'm camping, I you always have my pack on me. I have my gear on me. Hiking, you're going to have your gear on you if you get lost when you're hiking. So you have the kit, but you have your regular gear to supplement this. And that's how I carry it. I carry it in this pouch that is Alice adapted, and I carry it on that Alice belt. It's got room for other stuff. Because this, I call as we called it in the Boy Scouts, the ten essentials. A little more than ten, quite a bit more than ten essentials. But the, you know, it boils down to the quote ten things you you're, you need to survive. Not all these things are need to survive, but I I, I believe in redundancy, which is what, one of the reasons I have you know half a dozen ways to start a fire. But let's but. You know, to get into what else I carry in that ten so-called ten essentials belt pouch, I carry my little miscellaneous bundle of stuff. You know, a orange ba blaze orange bandana, some gloves, rubber latex rubber gloves. I prefer latex, but it's, a lot of people say it's not not a good idea, and it probably is not. There are people who are allergic, but for me, that's just if you know I'm cleaning a kill or a fish and I've got a cut in my hand yeah that's something you don't want is to be cleaning an animal and have a cut on your hand that's how you get a bacterial infection and if you're and if your short-term situation becomes a long-term one you don't want a bacterial infection you know sepsis that's not good trash bags multi-purpose use use a poncho if necessary you've got some denim. I can make a couple uses for that. Compress. But I, I, I usually make char cloth out of it. That's a fire starter if you don't know. I'll get into that later. I also have a regular poncho. Normally I have a rain jacket on me, but you know, let's say it's hot outside. I didn't take the rain jacket with me because it's a out. It's a shell to a big, thick winter coat. Yeah, this. If someone else needs it, yeah. Yeah, here you go, buddy. Yeah, just good idea. Always a good idea to have a little redundancy. Um, something a lot of people don't talk about when they have a knife. And I'll get into my knife in a little bit. This is a knife sharpener. Not a whetstone. It's, this is not as good as a whetstone, I'll admit. But it's faster, and it'll get me a good cutting edge. And it's cheap. Two dollars, two, three dollars at Walmart, and I'll pick one up every time I'm there. Just good to keep them around. Two at two sharpening sides. One is a fine ceramic bar design. The other is this little carbide thing for setting an edge, and this this is for putting the finishing touches on that edge. I keep that with me also. Um, okay, some other stuff. 
another little bundle. This one's a little different. I have you know the marking tape, that blaze orange stuff, several feet of that, taped up, and then with a 9 volt battery wrapped in a bicycle inner tube to keep it from touching the steel wool I keep with it. You know, again, more ways to make fire, but that's a pretty quick way if you're cold. Then I have the little duct tape thing is around a dowel, and that's some fishing line. Yeah, 10 pound test fishing line for my little fishing kit. I bought this. Normally I'd make it myself, but it was $8, and that's, and you're probably thinking, oh, that's outrageous. But I'm like, you know, someone's got to figure out if this is a good product. So, yeah, I keep it, keep it with me because you never know. It might come in handy. It's basically just some tackle. It's just some sinkers and some hooks, swivels and stuff and such. There's some line in there, aluminum foil, a little knife. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it was a nice little kit. I'll I'll post where I got some of this stuff in the description, just so just so. Clear. Um. One of my little knives. This is usually the knife I keep in there. It's not in production anymore, but you can probably find it on Google Shopping or something. This is a Columbia River Knife and Tool Ringer 1 Gut Hook. Though I must admit the gut hook isn't the best design. But I like it. It's a sharp little knife. It's lightweight, fits on your fingers. It's got a good, it's a neck knife. It's got a good Kydex sheath. I carry it all, it's flat. I carry it and people never know I'm carrying it. This is my backup to my standard carry knife, which is the Gerber Mini Fast Draw. It's got a serrated edge, but it's, you know, it's pretty subtle serrations, as I say. It's not salt, deep sawtooth serrations like on the full size one, where you can see, you know, that's, you can get, you know, cutting through clothing, you get fibers cut on that caught on that all the time I keep the serrated edge so I usually have to cut through rope and I prefer a serrated edge to do that this is actually pretty pretty flat you still get the advantage of the serrations but you still have a, a relatively re, relatively you know straight edge fine steel wool I just keep some of it you know it, I keep it in there also for cleaning Dutch ovens. Anybody who's ever cleaned one, this is your friend. It does not have soap in it. This is just plain steel wool from the hardware store. <sighs> Mini Maglite uh, regular incandescent bulb or xenon bulb, whatever that it is they use. When I was in boy during my time in Boy Scouts, we learned that you don't really use need to use these. I mean we always carried one like this, you know, small flashlight for when we're going through the pack at night or if we're cooking at night. But if you're doing any moving around camp, you really don't need a flashlight simply because you, if you've got another person there, you're going to blind them temporarily. You're going to shine in their face. Even by accident, you're going to blind them. And so we would say, do not walk faster than one can see. And I'm going to wind this up pretty soon. We're hitting 10 minutes in a minute. A little duct tape on a stick, similar to the Doug Ritter idea, but mine's a little spool and you can hold it at both ends. Someone has told me in a comment that it uh, wrapped around a credit card is a good idea. Well, I just prefer it like this. It's on a dowel, a couple, several feet just wrapped around. Handy. Super glue. It's good for making repairs and if necessary you can close a wound with it, but they a lot of people don't recommend it. I'm on the fence about it. And I tell you this, if I had a wound that I had stopped the bleeding and I needed it closed, I would rather have this and then, you know, need it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. This is survival yo-yo. Downside is you can't really practice with these, especially in my state, Georgia. These are illegal to use outside of a survival situation. You must be an active fisherman. You can't just, you know, lay a trot a trot line and get some fish. We got a couple seconds here. Char cloth I talked about. Tender box. Char cloth and fat wood. Two parts to making a fire. 
uh, spark light. And I've got to cut this video. Uh, we hit 10 minutes, I'm going to upload it.